In our prayer time tonight, God started saying, seat, 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 seat. Whoo. Do you, do you have any idea what that means? Jesus, all Jewish, or let's call them Hebrew men, because the tribe of Judah was one out of 12. So I like to say Hebrew. So all the Hebrew men had to wear what was called seat, seat. T-S-I-T, T-S-I-T. And they were little danglers that came down on each side. And so when the woman came in the press and the doctors had said, oh, you know, after they took all her money, they said, we can't do anything for you because she had an issue of blood and it wouldn't stop. The miracle was she could even walk. But faith rose in her heart because she heard there was a man that could heal the sick. And she came in the press and fought her way through and got a hold of his seat seat. That's called the hem of the garment. So she grabbed his seat seat, which was hanging down. And when she touched him, virtue flowed out of him. And he turned around and he said, who touched me? One woman of faith. One woman that had the gall to go against what the doctors said, go against what the law said. Oh, you can't leave if you have blood on you. Oh. And she went and got her healing. Now, who's ready to do that? You see, it, I'm so done with all the liars, aren't you? Just done. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my everything. He's the one I trust. Yeah. Oh, I'd have been dead 40 times if I'd have believed in doctors. They, they'll just tell you, oh, that's it for you. I go, oh, no, 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 you're wrong. <laughs> no, no, you're wrong. I know my Lord, and he is my healer. I know my Lord. So I'm feeling led to tell a short story I had unplanned. I, I was in Israel because my son and I used to walk Israel once a year. We'd walk all the borders and pray for Israel. And so I tore the meniscus in my knee. You guys know what that is. It's that little pad there. And uh, there was a little, little tear. And so it was very painful. I came home, and it was awful, and uh, I, I couldn't hardly walk because it hurt so bad. I went to a doctor, and, uh, you know, he was the only one available in this team of doctors. There were four of them. And they said, okay, you, you can see him right away. I guess he was the worst one because <laughs> I should have realized that because uh, if, if there's no waiting in a group, uh-oh, <laughs> Go to that one. Okay, so, uh, but uh, he was all, all there was. So he says, oh, yeah, he said, I can snip that off. That's what he said to me. He says, it won't, it won't be a big thing. I said, okay, let's snip that off of there. And he said, it's little. I said, okay. So he did it. And the next day, I came in there. Now, listen, this is bad, Okay. The next day I went in there and I was on crutches because it was swollen from the surgery. And I came in, I sat down. He came in with this smirk on his face. Oh, he was a devil. He was straight from the pit. He said, well, he said, I cut off most of the meniscus. I said, you did what? He says, yes. He said, you'll never, you'll never dive to the bottom of the ocean again. He said, you'll never hike up mountains again. He said, you'll never run through the jungle again. And he was smirking at me. Oh, he was a devil. I stood up and I screamed. And I'm going to tell you, everybody in that office heard me. I, I, my voice just amplified. I, I don't have a voice all that loud. But I'm going to tell you what, everybody heard me. Uh, because I will not let somebody curse me and let it stand. Come on. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. You can't let a curse stand. You've got to fight it. You've got to break it. You've got to scream and you've got to stop it. Because if it gets a hold of your heart and it gets a hold of your mind, it's got you. 
You know, doctors learned they can't come in to a patient that just had a heart attack and say, you had a heart attack, because at that moment when the person receives it in their mind and their spirit, they did. So doctors started coming in and they say, oh, you, you had a myocardial infarction. What is that? Nobody knows. So, okay, that means heart attack. But it, it, the person will not get as sick or have as many problems if they don't hear that they had a heart attack. You hear that? So hearing is important. That's why when somebody curses you to your face, you need to break it right to their face. They don't like you too much after that because they want to get away with it. I'm done with this, aren't you? Listen, we've got to grow up and fight the good fight. And so doctors, they'll tell you the awfulest things. And they aren't true because Jesus' word is true. By his stripes, I was healed. So he cursed me. I stood up and I screamed in the name of Jesus, the Messiah of Nazareth who came in the flesh. I will hike up mountains and I break the power of your cursing words to your face, you lying devil. And I will dive to the bottom of the sea. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'll run through a hundred jungles before I see you next. And I let him have it because he was a devil. And I broke the power of his cursing words. Come on. Well, God, God healed my knee. God started healing it right away. Because it's all by faith, don't you know? Within two or three months, God spoke to me. He said, go to Switzerland. Climb a mountain over Zurich, stake that land, and looking back over Zurich, release. Come on, are you got? Are you, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> release the wealth of the wicked back to the sons of God. Uh, this involved climbing up a mountain, <laughs> and so. I'm going to tell you, we went. I mean, we packed. I made one phone call, and that person made one phone call to a guy he knew in Switzerland. And I'm going to tell you, the guy met us at the airport. I didn't know him. His name was Rene something. I forgot. He's cool, though. <clears throat> he had figured out why I was coming to Switzerland. He was just, just had a prophetic bent to him. He was a very wealthy man. I didn't know him. So he picked us up in his mighty, mighty fancy car and took us to his big fancy house. And he said, I'm going to pay for everything. I'm going to pay for your whole trip. Oh, well, I'm, I'm your best friend now. And we're just going to be friends for life. So, uh, man, immediately he said, now I have something planned for your arrival. And he took us, me and the Dylan, we were, our eyes were crossing. We were so tired. We hadn't slept in a while after flying. And he says, no, this is to welcome you to our country. And he took me up a mountain, and we went pretty, pretty high up, and we took this, what do you call it, thing to the top. And, he, and there were all these people waiting there when we arrived, and they had shofars, and there was a group of them. And he said on 70 mountains at exactly 5 o'clock. Oh, they're very precise. You, if you go to Switzerland, you'll find this out. They're all watching those Swiss clocks. And so we got up there uh, just quarter to 5 or whatever, meeting everybody. At exactly 5 on 70 mountains, they blew shofars. And they all sang a song to welcome us there to release the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. We have a big God. Are you listening? So we, we took a number of days. Dylan and I hiked up a lot of mountains. Oh, because God healed me. And we prayed. The first one we went up was Diablo Isa, which means Devil Mountain. We went up that one. 
And we staked every daggum mountain we could get close to in Switzerland. I mean, we prayed. And we went to Credit Suisse and all their banks. And we laid hands inside and out and prayed. Nobody stopped us. Nobody thought about stopping us. And we went everywhere there was to go in Switzerland. And finally, we came back to Zurich. And on the last day, we went up the mountain with the son of the head of Campus Crusade for Christ. Except they don't use the word crusade. So it's Campus for Christ and another awesome anointed young man and me and the Dylan, four of us. We went up that mountain and we knelt down and the clouds came in, which hid us from other people there. And we got down and prayed and smashed the stronghold of the grip of the wicked over the finances of the world. Now, let me ask you, where do the wicked wealthy of the world keep their money? Swiss banks. So we did that, and we released exactly what God said. We went down that mountain, and we came home rejoicing because God did it all. We have a big God. And it was just a two, three weeks later, the Swiss decided to release all the money back to the Jews that had been held hostage since World War II. Oh, let's give them back their money. And they got it. And many other amazing things happened. But I want to ask you, would you like that blessing? Well, that was too wimpy. I just don't know. I don't think we can do it. What do you think of that? I guess you don't want that. This is all unplanned. I had another plan. All right. So if you want that released unto you tonight, why not? The wicked don't want you to prosper, but God said prosper and be in health Ooh. as your soul prospers. So stand up if you want that blessing. If you don't, if you don't want that, stay in your seat. It'll be all right. Uh, I love the Lord enough to know that when God says to do something, he has a purpose. And I'm his. I just do what he says. I don't really have an agenda yes. like ever. You, you know, pastors would get upset if they knew I don't really have an agenda. But I don't really. What I have is the desire to please the Lord. And I feel like, Andrew, this is all you live to do. You just want to please the Lord, don't you? And it just shows. It just flows through you. Uh, <clears throat> and Apostle Galetta, it, it, you just have a great passion to please the Lord. These, these You guys, this is your heart and it's why I like to come here it's because I see your heart I mean I look and it's like oh I love you Lord and it's just passion for the Lord so I say let's release those finances that God wants released into your hands so you can do what God called you to do yeah Okay, so I want you to just raise one hand if you really want to. You can raise two. I don't care. But at least one hand up there. In the name of Jesus, Lord, according to your word, in Proverbs, you said you would release the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. Therefore... I call it forth call it from the kingdom of darkness. Kingdom of darkness. Release it, Release it. Now. now in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Into, my into my hand. Yes, yes. Open, the open the double doors to me and to my church and to my hopes and dreams and to my destiny. I call forth all that you have for me, finances, open doors, provision for the vision. I call it forth now into my hand, 
Let the wealth of the wicked come into my righteous hands in the name of Jesus. Now faith is. Now faith is. I receive it. I believe it. It's mine. Amen. Give somebody a high five. Give somebody a high five. Come on. Come on. That's it. You can have a seat. Well, God has a great big plan for you. And there's nothing going to stop it but you. Because there's no devil in hell that can stop God's plan if only you'll believe. It's when you start agreeing with the devil that you get in trouble. Lots of doctors, they don't even know the Lord. There are a few that do. Those are the ones I want. There's one down in Florida. Oh, I almost got to meet him. I was just down there in February. Almost got to meet him, but circumstances. Anyway, this guy, he's a heart surgeon, and he prays over people, and they get up from the dead off his table. This is a this is good doctor here. But he knows Dr. Jesus. That's why he's a good doctor. So that's what I believe, that we place our faith in the Lord and in no other. He's our provider, he said so. Jehovah Jireh. Oh, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Okay, I want to talk about uh, a lot of things tonight, but here's going to be our opening scripture. We're going to look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. <clears throat> and uh, as I begin to read this scripture, I want you to think about the rain that God is sending. And the rain is so powerful and so precious. So chapter 2 starts with, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. So how many know we're in the end of days? And what happens at the end of days? The former and the latter rain. Oh, yes. And we want it. Now, I'm a farmer. I have an organic farm in Missouri. And I have orchards and gardens and bees and whatnot. And I'm going to tell you something. I need those spring rains. I look for them. I need them. This year, it was so much. Everything is so green. I showed you the picture that I took. It was green, wasn't it? Beautiful where my waterfall goes down off the pond and everything. And we water everything from the pond. So now I want you to know that I understand about farming and what it means. And I impart a lot of that to the pygmies because they're hunter-gatherers and they've never farmed. And the first time that, that I went out with seed and the pygmies, they, uh, they couldn't understand it. They, they used the hose. They were willing to hoe. They'd seen others hoe, and they thought maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> they just had no idea. And, and they hoed up after we cleared the ground and, and everything, and all the women standing there with the hose and everything. <laughs> and so then uh, we put the seeds in the ground, and the women all stood around, and they were, and then the men all came, and they couldn't understand. I said, "Now, you know, we're go we put the seeds in the ground. It'll be two or three months before the harvest." And they go, "What's that?" Because they don't understand time. Everything's today, so they they can't count, and uh, they can't read. They can't write, so they they don't have education. So to understand the concept of two or three months is outside the realm of what they know. So I said, in two or three months, the harvest will come. They go, huh? And some of them just stood there all day looking at the ground. <laughs> and they're getting frustrated because nothing is happening. And finally, one of them got there and dug up the seed and goes, what's wrong? 
So I had to sit down with a whole bunch of them and say, you must wait today and tomorrow. Oh, uh, and, then, and it's going to be many days and then the harvest. So it was a very difficult concept. But I tell you that the fields are ripe unto harvest. Amen. And this is the day that we're looking for the former and the latter rain. And God is going to pour out of his spirit on all flesh. And this is the day that we cry, Lord of the harvest, come. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Well, I don't know, two, three months later, we got a phone call in Missouri. Hurry, hurry. It was the pastor I placed over the villages. Hurry. He says, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. <laughs> you have to come and help us. So I sent my whole team in. To, we brought in a hundredfold harvest. Hundredfold. It was so amazing. The whole region came to look. Nobody could believe it. I said, God did this. Only God could do this. Now watch this. They had just come through a crisis, which was Ebola. Ebola, 90% death rate. Not like COVID. 0.002 death rate. But they shut the world down for that. COVID is 90%. Code. Ebola Zaire. Ebola Zaire. 90%. So... <clears throat> A lot of people died, but nobody died in my pygmy villages because they draw, we draw the bloodline of Jesus all the way around the village. And they told everybody, we will not run and hide in the forest because we serve the Lord. And we will keep our word to Jesus and to Dr. Bree. We will stand and believe God for our salvation. And that's what they told the rest of the area, all the people and other pygmies. And the pygmies that ran, that weren't saved, that had come into the village, went into the jungle. And all of them died. But the ones that stayed behind the bloodline of Jesus lived. You see, now they get a hundredfold harvest. Hundredfold. And people came from all around the region to say, how'd you get that? How'd you get that harvest? They said, we trusted the Lord our God. How many did you lose in the epidemic? They said, we lost everybody. What are you talking about? And my favorite little, she said, well, okay. How many, uh, how was your harvest? Oh, we didn't get a harvest. Everybody's dead. They said, look around you, because they had gathered in their hundredfold harvest. He said, look around you. The God I serve not only saved all of us because we trusted in him, but he gave us a hundredfold harvest. And all those people, the big Africans that hate those little pygmies, were standing there aghast. They said, my favorite little chief said, don't you want our God? And he had been saved about two years. He led all those big Africans who hate pygmies to Jesus. Now that's a harvest. A physical harvest and a spiritual harvest. They go hand in hand. And we pray, Lord of the harvest, send us as laborers into your last great harvest. The world, they want to tell you, oh, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. Are you hearing that message? Yeah. Well, I don't like being all back there. Can you help me get this up here? I want to be closer. Okay, good, good. That's good. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to look at this, and we're going to look at Joel, and it says, let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Let the weak say... Okay, so you believe it or you don't. But God says, let the weak say, I am strong. And this is in the midst of the harvest that's coming. 
because they want you to, uh, to believe that you're weak. And I say, no, God made you strong in the Lord, not in yourself, and in the power of his might. We're looking for the harvest now, yes? We're looking because this is the hour. And so I'm looking at verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And then, I love this, and the floor shall be full of wheat. What is the wheat? Come on. This is prophetic stuff. He might be talking about the first level of understanding, which is the physical wheat. But there are four levels of understanding to every word of God. Let's go on up to the fourth level. Why are we dawdling on level one? Yes. Yes. Level four, the wheat are the people who are saved and living for God and living right. The chaff are the ones that aren't going to make it. We want to reach in and call in the wheat. Yes? So the harvest is upon us, but the laborers are few. So few. All right. <clears throat> so the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And watch this now. Get ready. Get ready. Everybody ready? Yes. Oh, come on. Are you ready? Yes. This is good. Yes. This is so good. I love the word of God. Okay. I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. So if you want restoration and life, stand your feet. You see, you get your exercise in here tonight. You don't need to go to any class. This is it. The word of God. Jesus. Jesus. I believe your word, I believe your word. Above, what I can see above what I see or hear or feel. Your, feel. your word is true your word is and your word is above all things because your word is a person and my redeemer lives. And my redeemer lives. Restore, to Restore to me the years, the years that, the that the locust and the canker worm, the canker worm hath eaten. Worm hath now! now. Faith is. Faith is. I receive it. I, receive I believe it. it. I'm youthening. I'm youthening. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. I like it. Who likes that? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for restoration and life. Restoration and life. Restoration and life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, you can have a seat. I love this. Oh, the word is so good. And you shall eat in plenty. Oh, listen. And be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Oh, that's so good. I love it, don't you? You see, he's talking a lot uh, about in the last days here, he's going to send the rain. And the, what is the rain, really? Revival. Come on. Come on. And he said moderately first. Then he said shabang. The whole thing. The whole thing. All the rain. All of it. And so we're going to get it all. But we, I think we're going to have to fight for it. I don't think it's going to be handed on a silver platter. I think God's looking for the warriors now. I got one that's right. The back row. What about you guys? Huh? Is God looking for warriors? Are you a warrior? Oh! I am a mighty warrior. Dress for battle. Teach my hands to war. Amen. Yeah, we're cooking with gas. I like it. All right. You see, you got to participate in this thing. You can no longer lay around 
and hope it'll happen. You've got to walk out and execute the word of the Lord. That means act on it. Mm. Action. 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 Now, I think I must go to Isaiah 55. And I'm hoping. Uh, I'm going to look at 44 first. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Are you thirsty? Don't get fat and sassy. Stay thirsty. Stay desperate. I'm not kidding. I tell you, I had a little tragedy. It's a big tragedy last fall. And uh, I laid in bed, and then I'd go out and eat haagen in my kitchen. And then I'd go back and lay in bed and cry. And then I went out and ate more haagen And I pecked on 10 pounds. But it's over. I'm done with that. You see, there's a time to mourn, and there's a time to rejoice. Let's lay down those mourning clothes and stomp them. Let's put on the oil of joy and the anointing of God. And let's march forth and do what God called us to do. And me and the Dylan, we made a decision. We're getting up out of our bed of mourning and we're going forth to do what God called us to do. And we're laying down those mourning clothes. It's not going to be for us. Because God called us from the foundation of the world. And we made a choice. I want you to make a choice. Come on. Choose whom you will serve. If the Lord is God, follow him. But today is the day to choose because we're running out of time. Now that's the truth. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Oh, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing shall be on thy offspring. I'm going to look at Isaiah 55. Oh, I missed it. Are you ready? Uh-huh. People say, oh, 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 there's all this lack. No, no, no. If, if there's lack, pray. If there's lack, believe. But best of all, if there's lack, stand on the word which will hold you up. Stand on the word. Because the word is power. Now listen to this. Everyone that thirsteth. Didn't it just say stay thirsty? You know, in the military, they say frosty, stay frosty. So that's good. But really, I think we should go biblically, stay thirsty. Okay, so everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Are you getting this message yet? Oh, all right. And he that hath no money... Come ye, buy and eat. That's supernatural. That's the provision of God. So when you get in trouble, believe God. Come to him. Thirst for him. Press into him and he will provide. He's promised to be your provider. Who believes that? If you believe it, act like it. Come on. I love it. Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Come, yea, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. God will make a way. Rivers in the desert. There's no lack in heaven. Are you a citizen of heaven? Yes or no? Because in heaven there's no lack. Uh Uh-huh. In heaven, there's no lack. In heaven, there's no sickness. Aren't you a citizen of heaven? 
Walk through every storm then triumphant. Because the water is going to rain down on you in a way to refresh you like you've never believed or never had before. This is the rain of the mighty God that you serve. And nothing will be impossible. Because he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. That's my God. Who's your God? Hmm. Now I want to say this. Rain as fire. And I want every phone turned off. Completely off. Every phone off. Make sure. Check it now. No more interruptions. Every phone off. Okay. <clears throat> Last night we talked about fire. But I want to tell you tonight... Fire can be destruction. It can burn everything up. It can burn up the chaff. And it will. But fire can also be blessing because it's the fire of the Holy Spirit. And our God is a consuming fire. Do you understand? Rain can be a curse because, all right, I, I'm going to. I'm going to tell you in Genesis 7, 4, he said, I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Do you know if it rains in Missouri where I live for three days straight, we got flood. We've got flood. I lost my bees. I lost two of my bee, two beehives in a rain three years ago because it wouldn't stop. And my bees washed down the creek. So it was a bad thing. We say crick in Missouri. You do what you want. I, I don't know. So now, so I had to get more bees, and we put them in a different spot, and they're all fine and happy now. But listen, rain can be destructive, or rain can be the blessing. Do you understand? We're looking for that rain that's the blessing, aren't we? That's the rain that we're looking for in these last days. So there's a point well made, and we must understand it. But God is making a way for us now that is beyond. I, I want to tell you another story. I was uh, sitting in my house behaving myself. It was a rare event. And, <laughs> and God spoke to me, and he said, Amazon. I said, okay. He said, go to the Amazon. They're in a drought and he said, pray for the rain. Now, it was well known in the early parts of my ministry, but you all didn't know me then. And it's not happening now unless I pray in a specific way and I hear from God. But it just so happened that a few years into the ministry, God said, I'm going to make it rain everywhere you go. And it was so. In fact, it was so rainy that it would be like sheets of rain and stuff. And, and people couldn't even come to my meetings because it was raining. So I'm not kidding. There were people that said, oh, no, Bree's coming <laughs> because it was rain so hard. And uh, it was just a cleansing. It was a sign and a wonder. And so God said, go to the Amazon. They're in a drought. And I knew that what he wanted really wasn't just the rain. He wanted revival and it would be a sign so dylan and i got down there and we had a group of people and we went to a little village which was so far back from the river because of the drought it was a mile back from the river and this village was built on the river that's how bad the drought was and all their big rain barrels all the indians in the jungle there empty and there was no food and they were hungry so I got there, and we said, we're going to do a musical tonight. We're going to do music, bring everybody, and we'll all meet in the center of the village. And so we did that, and then we preached a hard message of repentance. Everybody repented, and then everybody got saved. And then, then uh, I said to the chief, I'm going to get on my knees, and I'm going to pray. And God will send the rain and so much rain that all your rain barrels will fill up. He said, oh, good. So I got on my knees and I cried out just like Elijah. Oh, God, send the rain. And I 
counted to 30. I mean, it poured. Sheeting pours of rain. And it was so intense you couldn't see this far in front of your face. God did it. It was God. Signs and wonders will follow them that believe. How many believers in the house? How many believers in the house? Because God didn't lose a recipe for rain. <laughs> Did he? And the rain brought revival again. All the rain barrels filled up. And I said to the chief, look at this. Look what God is doing. Oh, praise the Lord. He was praising and dancing in the rain. And everybody was out in the night dancing in the rain. And then I said, gather up all your nets and all your men. I said, go down to the river and put in your nets, but make sure you're careful because they're going to break. You're going to catch so many fish. And he went down to the river. Come on, it's pouring rain, still pouring rain. You really don't catch fish in the rain. I don't know if we got any fishermen here, but that's not the time to fish. But I said, go. And they went and they filled their nets with fish so many it took the whole village to drag them back up. And they began. It quit raining and they cooked all the fish. This is my first experience tasting piranha. <laughs> Never again. So... Uh, I mean, it takes 10 of them to get one mouthful. They're little, and, and they don't taste good. But anyway, they loved it, and they were eating all these bizarre-looking fish I never saw in my life that came out of that Amazon River. And listen, the whole village, they started smoking the fish because there were so many. And after that, when they got their fish cooked, oh, my gosh, it started to rain again. And it rained and it rained. And in the middle of the rain, a man came up, and he said, I have to tell you a story. He said, two weeks ago, I was walking through the jungle. And he said, I was so tired. I told my three friends, go ahead, I'll catch up. But, he, but I never did. And he said, they came back for me and I was gone. But there was a snake, a 45-foot snake, 46, with the shape of a man in him. And he said, that was me. He said, I was asleep and the anaconda ate me. Yeah, did you know there are man-eating snakes in the Amazon? That's real. Of course, if you watch that stupid movie, anaconda, just laugh all the way through because that's silly. That, that's not the way it is. But they are big, man-eating snakes. And so, uh, so I have an actual photograph of this event his friends came back and found the snake and they realized it was their friend so they took pictures i'll hold it for anybody that's uh, at home watching they took pictures of the snake giant snake and then they cut their friend out and he lived So you can see the shape of the, how long that snake is. Anyway, I thought we'll pass it real quick, no hogging. Pass it, look, pass, pass, to the back, then come up this way, and then go down that way. I want everybody to see and then return it to me, okay? This is amazing, but he said, I believe that God saved my life so I could come to Jesus. So... So, see, revival will break out when God sends the rain. And I, now I'm talking about America. Yeah. 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 Oh, America. You know, Jesus, if he was standing here, he'd say, I would have gathered you to me as a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. We've left, let the spirit of division and the spirit of Jezebel. We've let all the nasty spirits loose and the Christians have slept through it, hiding in their houses. Listen, 
This is not the time to hide in your house. This is the time to go forth into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs will follow them that believe. This is your day. Do you believe that? This is your day. You understand me? This is your day to step forth and do what God called you to do. Because the time of hanging back and hoping and waiting is over. The time to go forth and come out of the cocoon you've been in hiding. God says no more. God says come forth, step forth, become who he called you to be. In Jesus name. Whenever I give a word, and I did this last night, I, I, I try to remember how many believe that word was for you. I might give it to her, but it's for many. This is your day. Haven't you waited a long time for this? I have. Because I know we're going to see the salvation of our God. Oh, listen, when Elijah had led all the people of Israel to Jesus on the top of Mount Carmel, he went to the bottom and took his own sword and killed all the false prophets. And then he went back up and he began to pray for the rain. And he prayed seven times. And then God sent the rain, and he went to Ahab. He said, eat and drink, gird up your loins, and get them moving, because it's going to rain. And he meant hard rain, because they'd had a three-and-a-half-year drought. This is going to sound interesting, but I think that America's been in a drought. Yes. And I believe it's been a certain amount of time but I believe he's waiting on the sons of God to arise and go take the land. See, but didn't I start out tonight showing you that steak? I'm delighted that Dylan handed that to me first. He usually hands it to me last. I don't even know if he consciously thought about it. But it was to show you it's time to take our land. And we're not going to pay attention to all the people that say, you can't do that. You can't do this. You can't go here. You can't go there. I'm done with that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's going to strengthen me body, soul, and spirit. Come on. Don't you believe the report of those doctors and all the negative stuff your relatives and friends have said? Phooey. I'm choosing to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What do you think of this picture so far? <laughs> Did you ever see such a thing? Oh, while we're at it, let's get out. And, I got another picture. Okay. This also happened in the Amazon. That's an anaconda. I'm holding a 20-footer. I went into this one village, I, I guess I should have told you, Dylan and I used to work in the Amazon before we got called to the Congo. And um, we went into this village, and I was talking to them, telling them, we're, you know, we're going to do a musical, blah, 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 and all this. And they came up behind me and plunked this wild creature around my neck. That's an anaconda. And listen, you can't tame them. They're not nice. They have reticulated teeth that go like that. And if they get their teeth in you, you have to kill the animal to get them out and then pry them out. It's not good. And they roar. They roar. Yeah. People don't know that. They think that they just hiss. They do, but they roar. They're big. So this one, when his, his head was next to my head, it was as big as my head, but it's down there, his head. But he's wrapped all the way around me, and his tail goes down off the, off the picture there. So he's well over 20 feet. And uh, they plunked that thing around me. Let's pass that picture, too. But I, I want to point out a thing or two. Maybe I better tell the story and then, yeah, because it won't make sense. 
So they plunked it around me, hoping I would show fear, and then they could say, we, we won't hear anything you have to say. But I don't have fear. I just don't walk in fear. I, I let that go a long time ago. I would never be able to go into the Congo if I walked in fear because it's the most dangerous place in the world, bar none. There's over 150 armies fighting in there. Hmm? It's real dangerous. So... <clears throat> So I just uh, I just pulled his head out. He was snapping and hissing and roaring. And I just took a hold of him. And I pulled him out from me like this. You can see I've done it. And I began to speak to that creature. There is one name above every name. Come on. And you can see no fear on my face. None. But you can also see I am speaking. And I said to that snake, which was fighting me, trying to choke me, roaring, hissing, snapping in my face. And I said, peace, be still. And he became a stick. A stick. And I took him off and I went over and plunked him around Dylan's neck. And, and he came alive and started snapping and hissing. We have authority over serpents and scorpions and over Say it again. the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Come on. Either you believe it or you don't, but if you don't, stay home and repent <laughs> because you're not going with me. I will not take the cowards and the fearful with me because where I go, it is dangerous. The staff that I have in the Congo are mighty men of valor, every last one of them. Oh, my gosh, they're mighty in the Lord. And they can do anything that you see in that Bible. They can do it. And they have. So this is who we all need to be, isn't it? Amen. This is who we want to be right here, right now in San Jose and all the surrounding area. Because the devil wants to sift California like wheat. Sift you. What do you say to that? Wait, did everybody get to see it? Everybody? Well, well, now Andrew wants to see it too. And then, then we're going to, everybody pass in that other one? No hogging. Did I mention this? No hogging. Let's go faster. I want everybody to get to see that beautiful anaconda. So what do I say to you? God will send the rain and God will give you the courage to walk through every storm. And when the test comes, make your stand. Don't run away. You know what happened after that snake thing when they saw they couldn't scare me? And then I just picked the thing up, and put it on Dylan, and he wasn't scared. They said, okay, we're ready to hear whatever you have to say. <laughs> Don't you love it? Well, there are going to be tests that are coming to you. Oh, try to pass the test. Tests are coming. I'm not lying to you. I'm going to be the one that tells you the truth. Tests are coming. It won't be easy, but you will be victorious. If only you'll believe. The trying of your faith worth the work of patience. You know, they came and they, they grabbed uh, Peter the Awesome. And they threw him in jail for preaching the gospel. And Angel came and just let him out. Come on, this is great. This is fantastic. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, God, send the rain. Send the rain. Miracle signs and wonders will follow them that believe. I love the word, don't you? Now I want to look at Hosea. And I want to look there real quick. 
And I like the, the Bible. Have you noticed this? I love the word of God. But I want to see Hosea. And we're going to quickly look at Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12. This is just a quick look. Sow to yourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy. How about that? You're going to do righteousness. A number one. Because the world is watching. They're looking. What they don't want to see is a bunch of Christians that can't do anything but whine about how sick they are and how poor they are and how stupid they are. Of course, they won't say I'm so stupid. But they might as well. I'm sick and I'm poor. And they're just spitting in the face of God. And so the world goes, I don't need that. See, we need to be better than that. We need to walk on a higher level than that, especially in this last day. Because the tests are coming, but the so are the signs and wonders. It's all coming up together. Yeah. It's all coming up together. Now, why don't you say, signs and wonders follow me. Because I'm a believer. I'll sow in righteousness... And I'll reap in mercy. How many think you need some mercy? If you want mercy, give mercy. Oh, I don't like that. I have enemies. Didn't you know that? Oh, yes, I have them too. I just spent an hour and a half on the phone today with two pastors. I won't tell you who they are or where. But it's an hour and a half. They're under so much attack, you wouldn't believe it. I said, give them mercy, give them mercy, and just see what God will do. It'll heap coals of fire on their head. You'll see the hand of God. Oh, I don't know. I said, you're a pastor. You don't know? I don't like to have to rebuke people, but look, if you can't give mercy, you can't expect to get any. Why don't you go love your enemies and see what God will do for you? Oh, it's not easy to love your enemies. Nobody ever said it was easy to love your enemies. It's because it's hard that it's a test. Try to pass the test. And the reward is coming. So in righteousness, reap in mercy. Oh, but this goes on. I love it. Break up your fallow ground. So wherever in your life you are struggling and you are trying and trying to plow, you got fallow ground, baby. It's time for you to go get a gooder plow, okay? Good English there, right? Go get a gooder plow and, and, and sharpen those blades and get ready. And then you plow up that fallow ground and you'll see the harvest because God will send the rain. I know by the spirit that there are a lot of people in here that have fallow ground in your life. This means you've neglected things in your life that you needed to handle and take care of and repent of and do right. Come on. Come on. I believe in this. Repent every day. I believe it. And I live it. Sometimes I repent multiple times a day. Depending on my day. And I don't care. Because I don't want the devil to find any place in me. Oh, he may come. But I want to be like Jesus. Let him find no place in me. Come on. So this may involve multiple repentance every day. But uh, I want to repent at least once a day. Because this keeps me clean so there's no avenue to attack. Does that make sense? All right. Now now watch this. Break up your fallow ground. For it's time to seek the Lord till he come. So we don't stop seeking. He's a coming. But we've got to seek him till he comes. Oh, well, he's, he's never coming. You know, my grandpa said he was coming in the 1950s, and he never. Listen, I got relatives that say this stupid stuff. And he never came, so I'm just going to go do what I. No, no, no. Seek him till he comes. Never stop. 
Seek the Lord. All right. And rain righteousness upon you till he come and rain righteousness upon rain righteousness upon you. Amen. Now I'm going to go back to Joel three and it's hard against Hosea there. Okay. This is put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Oh yeah. Verse 13 of three. And then, oh my gosh, look at this. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Oh, put you in the sickle because the fields are wide in the harvest. There's so many that need the Lord now. We got two generations of young people that, that never even heard of Jesus. They're going in school. They're teaching them Marxist communism there. They're teaching them all kinds of bizarre things I'm not going to get into tonight. Just ridiculous stuff. And they're not teaching them reading, writing, arithmetic, which is what they actually need. Everything but what they need. So now we've got two generations coming up that have never heard the Ten Commandments. The school I went to as a child had the Ten Commandments. And every single day we got up and we said the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And we thanked God for America and we prayed before we started our school day. That's the school I grew up in. And I can't believe now nobody even knows who Jesus is and they don't care because they've been told there is no God. Oh, listen, you're carriers of the truth. You're carriers of the power of God. You're carriers of the anointing. And you can set every captive free because God called every person in this room to be a deliverer and to set the captives free. Oh, rise above who you are and become who God called you to be. This is your hour. I went to Israel one time and the Israel was in a drought. Have you noticed God sends me to droughts? And so I got there and I, I flew into Tel Aviv and I got a little taxi driver, a little Hebrew Jewish man. And he started crying as he's driving us up to Jerusalem where we were going to start our prayer and all that. And he was just crying. I thought, how's he going to even drive? He's crying. So we finally arrived at our hotel and we got out and I said, why are you crying? He said, because Israel's in a drought and the Galilee is so low that the water's poisonous and nobody can drink it. And we're all going to die unless we get the rain. So I said to that little taxi driver, see, everything is an opportunity. Are you, you understand if God puts somebody in front of you and they start saying things like that, God sets you there right there for that day and that moment, that hour. And he's going to use you. And God said, when you stand in the way, I'll give you the words. So I, I just, I said, well, listen now, what's your name? He told me, I said, listen, I'm going to go in this hotel. And when I get in there tonight, I'm going to start to pray. And when I pray to Yeshua HaMashiach, he will send the rain. And the Galilee will come up and everybody will live. He goes, oh. I said, now, if I do that and tonight it starts to rain, and I'm telling you, I'm going to pray and it's going to rain. When it rains, would you accept Yeshua HaMashiach as your Savior and believe in him as Messiah? He said, sure. Because he didn't think it would happen. So I went in there. And I'm going to tell you we ate supper. And we went up to the room. And I started. To, oh the hummus is divine there. Oh I just had to pause. And reflect. You never put anything in your mouth like that fresh. Hummus. Okay. Back to the story. Okay. I got into that room. And I got down and I started to cry out to God. Oh, God, send the rain. 
like you did for Elijah. You're no respecter of persons. I'm crying out to you to send the rain and bring the revival and change this nation. And so I started to pray with all my heart. And so about midnight, here comes the rain. And it rained, and it rained. It ruined my whole trip. And it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained. And on the third day, I was still in Jerusalem. It snowed. Hallelujah. It was April. It snowed, and it snowed. It made international news. And then the sun came out, and it rained. And we went down into the area, Masada, Sodom, and Gomorrah, and into the Dead Sea. It never rains down there. Sodom and Gomorrah is dry. It poured. It just poured. And Dylan and I had a party running around picking up all the sulfur balls to bring home to throw against doors for judgment. That's what we do. We've shut down porn shops. We've shut down New Age bookstores. Oh, it stinks. It's sulfur. It gets on your hands at three days before they smell right again. So, you know, but that's the way. So we bring those home. Now, but we couldn't have done it nearly as well if it hadn't rained and cleared, cleared it all, all the dust. And then we could see the sulfur. Cool, right? God's awesome. And then we went down to the Dead Sea where it never rains. It poured so much we couldn't leave the hotel. It was sheeting rain at the Dead Sea. And then we went all around and finally we went into Elot. And I said, God, stop the rain. I've got to go up that mountain and pray. There's a certain mountain where you can see all five countries from up there. And we got us two camels. And we went up to the top of the mountain. <laughs> And we prayed over all those uh, uh, countries around there because we were going to walk all the borders too. And then we went over into Jordan from there, and it, the rain followed us into the Bedouin territories of Jordan. They were all running out of their ramshackle whatevers they're living in. It's a mess. And they were jumping up and down and, and getting the rain on them, and everybody was jumping, all the Bedouins and stuff. And we went down to Petra, where it never rains. And I'm going to tell you, it was sheeting rain, but we still went and prayed in Petra because that is a place of refuge. It's important. It's important to the Lord. So we went in there and prayed. Are you getting the picture? It, the rain followed me for three weeks. It never stopped. And then I went home, rejoicing. Listen, God will bring signs and wonders in these last days. How many believe what I've just said? Amen. Now, you may say, well, Bree's going a little long here. I don't know what to think. Well, we're going to play a song now, and I want you to listen. It's called, And Then the Rains Come. But uh, while you're cueing that song up, I want to tell you that God in Isaiah 25 and 4 says he is a refuge from the storm. So when the rains start coming, the persecution will also come. But God is a refuge in the midst of the storm. And he says in the midst of the storm, I will cause you to triumph. So you're going to triumph, but it won't be easy. So I want you to close your eyes and listen to this song. It's so beautiful, and it's all about the coming revival. Okay, go ahead.
I say to you, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ and in them that are saved and them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. I tell you now that I believe that the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. And I believe that God put me on this earth and he put you on this earth for a purpose. Amen. And the purpose is divine. Amen. Purpose is not something you thought up. It's something God gave you. It's something he imparted to you before the foundation of the world. It's strong. It's fragrant. It's powerful. 
It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the rain. It's the fire. It's everything God is, and he lives in you, the hope of glory. All of it is in you because he placed it there before the foundation of the world, and all he wants you to do is rise up and walk into what he called you to do. Walk in to what he called you to be because it's not hard. We make it hard. It's not hard. The stories I told you tonight, they weren't hard. I walked where God told me to go, and God did the miracles. That's all. It's, way, it's because I live for him. I don't live for me. I've tried that live for me, Jazz. It didn't work out. When I gave everything to him, that's when all these things began to take place and happen. When I laid down my life for the cause of Christ. And I said, here I am. Send me. And I don't care where it is. When you do that, it's called I surrender all. I surrender all. Anybody ever heard of Mariah Woodworth Edder? Now, I can't remember every detail, but I'm going to give you the outline. She had something like 12 children, and God called her. Now, this is back, you know, in the late 1800s and early 1900s when she lived. She was a mighty woman. Miracles, signs, and wonders followed her. Oh, my gosh, it was amazing. And God called her, and she said, no, no, I have to raise my children. So a child died. God said, come to me, serve me. I've called you. No, no, I have a child. Okay, she lost every single child. And she got down to one son, and, and, and God said, will you follow me? Yes, because she had one son left. She would not obey God. It's a hard story, but it's true. And the second that she said yes, a door opened to her and she began to preach and the power and the fire and the anointing of God began to fall. Signs and wonders. Thousands and thousands came to Jesus. And she was known that these signs would come and she'd be preaching and, and she'd have her hand out and she'd just freeze. Three days. She'd be like that for three days. The signs and wonders. And then she'd just take off. She'd stop middle sentence, just freeze. And then... After three days, she'd just go on preaching like nothing happened. And people go, oh, my gosh, God is real. You see, signs and wonders will follow you if only you obey the Lord and follow him and do his will. Oh, it's too hard. Don't you know I have this and I have this? No, 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 you don't. You don't. Lay it down. Lay it down and follow the Lord and you'll see. You'll see his fire and his glory and his reign will come. And God is calling you now. Stop saying I can't because. There is no reason not to follow God and do what he called you to do. I can tell you when I laid everything down and I said, God, kill me now. He said, it's about time. And that's when he raised me up and said, okay, come on. Man, it's worth it. It's worth it. And one more story because this is so important and then we're going to go into the healing. So I want you to keep releasing your faith for your healing. And you can cue the Stripe song. You're going to have to switch CDs now. Don't play it yet. Just switch it. <clears throat> now this happened... Down in Elk Grove, and it happened three years ago. There was a youth revival. And there was a young woman, they were all youth, but she's a young woman known to be a prophetess. And um, she had her head down, and everybody else was up praising and rejoicing. And, and they, had, she, they turned around, they saw her like that, crying with her head down, and they stopped everything. And they said, What is wrong? She said, I just 
saw a vision, a true vision. They said, tell us. She stood up weeping and she said, I just saw thousands of people in a line and they were walking into hell. It was like a tunnel and they were all walking into hell. And and she said, I, I looked and they all had signs around their necks and the signs said, almost saved. Lord, let it not be so. Let us not miss the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let us run this race. Oh, I can't run, don't you know? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Call upon the Lord. You can do everything he told you to do. And I tell you now, all things are possible to him that believes. Is there anybody in this house that does not know Jesus and has not made him your Savior? If that is you, raise your hand. Because I don't want you to leave the way that you came. Anybody, just raise your hand and I will pray for you. Anybody. Last night, there was somebody. Yeah, we were all excited. Is there anybody? Do you know the Lord? It's important now. I want you to, I want you to do something. I want you to just put both hands out like that. Because God wants you to receive... Everybody do it. You know, put your hands out. God wants you to hear and receive what he has for you. And the time for you is now. And the word of God is, come to me. And the word of God for all of you is, I am coming soon, says Jesus. But Jesus wants me to say to you that he does love you. He does love you. And he is the Holy One of Israel. And he came just for you. And he wants you to embrace all that he has for you and hold back no more. This is your day. Amen. Jesus. We pray that there no never again be one almost saved. But that each of us would step up and become who you called us to be. And this day and this hour would be the preparation for the flow of the anointing and the signs and wonders. And I tell you this, Jesus is here tonight and many angels are here. And God has sent healing angels in here too. And God is looking for you to receive your healing tonight. And God is saying, open your heart to me because I came to set every captive free. And so there'll be people that'll be delivered in here tonight. God's just going to do it. It'll be his sovereign hand. And his angels are going to lay hands on you while I do this song. This is happening right now as we speak. It's already begun. Who knows that angels are touching you right now. If you do raise your hand because they are. They are. They've been unleashed into this meeting. And their desire is for you to walk out of here whole so that you can rise up and do all that God called you to do in this world.